Welcome to another video. My name is Heather and as always I'm reading with a vengeance and I hope you are as well. Today I want to talk to you about some book recommendations for people who are animal lovers like myself. These aren't just book recommendations that have animals in them, although that's always a plus, but I chose some books that really kind of spotlight the relationship between people and animals. Now I picked a few that are very very well known um, but hopefully I will have some on this list that you might not have heard of that might intrigue you. Now, as I'm, I was going through my list of books looking for some of my favorites and I'm flipping through my Goodreads and I had to stop myself a couple of times because I'm like, oh, wait a minute, not books with animals in the title. So um, Bird Box, no. Where the Crawdads Sing, mm, The Silence of the Lambs. Now this is a list of books that will leave you warm and fuzzy, maybe shed a tear, full disclosure. Either way, if you're an animal lover, I think that you would like these books. The first one I wanna talk about is called A Big Little Life, A Memoir of a Joyful Dog. And this is by Dean Koontz. And I thought this was an interesting one because it is written by an actual author, uh, a favorite author of say, people who enjoy horror novels. This book is a memoir told by Dean Koontz about when he and his wife adopted a retired service dog, Trixie, a three-year-old golden retriever. And I thought the best way to describe this book was just to read the review that I wrote about it. Being a dog lover, I always love to hear good dog stories, especially stories that describe how much a human loves a dog. While there were some interesting anecdotes about some strange undog-like behavior exhibited by Trixie, I don't think it was so unusual. I am appreciative that someone was able to explain so accurately and articulately just exactly what dogs truly are. The next book is actually a pair of books that are very well known, and I believe there was a movie made about them, and that is, of course, the, A Dog's Purpose and A Dog's Journey by W. Bruce Cameron. These books are told from the perspective of a dog, and it's a dog who goes through many lives. So kind of once one life ends, he wakes up as a puppy as another, as another dog. And he is searching, he's wondering, what his purpose in life is. And he talks a lot about his relationship with humans and it's heartwarming. Of course, it's also heart-wrenching, but it also allows the reader to question perhaps their own purpose. And I feel that's always an interesting question. The next book I would recommend is called Pax. I have mentioned this book in a previous video. This is a middle grade book, I believe, and it follows the story of a, a fox and his boy. The boy rescued the fox who was abandoned by his mother and ends up raising the fox uh, as his own. And then they're separated uh, because the boy's father goes off to war and the boy is sent uh, hundreds of miles away to live with his grandfather and they leave the fox behind to fend for itself in the wild. And the boy uh, believes that Pax, the fox, will not survive without him. So he runs away from his grandfather and the story follows his journey. And then Pax is waiting for his boy to come back and he befriends other foxes in the wild. And it talks about his journey and it's heartwarming. And it goes back and forth from the boy's perspective and the fox's perspective and it's lovely. The next book I'll share with you is a graphic novel and it is Everything is Teeth by Evie Wilde. This is a graphic novel memoir and it talks about the author Evie Wilde when she was a young girl. She would spend, I believe, her summers with her family in Australia and she was fascinated by sharks. And just a quick blurb from the back, it is a deeply moving graphic memoir about family, love, loss, and the irresistible forces that, like sharks, course through life unseen, ready to emerge at any moment. It's heartwarming. Uh, there's some funny parts in here. I like how they combined uh, the artistry with actual photos of sharks. Um, I will warn you, there's a couple of pages, not very many, just a couple of pages that are a little bit graphic in nature. Um, as far as the damage that sharks can do. But other than that, yes, uh, if you like graphic novels, I would recommend this one. The next book I would recommend is The Traveling Cat Chronicles by Hiro Arikawa. This follows Nana the cat and his person, 
Satoru. And they are on a road trip in Japan and Nana is having a great time and he doesn't know why he's on this road trip, but they're going to visit many of Satoru's family and friends and he's having a great time. But there is a specific reason why Satoru is taking Nana to all these places and meeting all these people. And when Nana finds out, it's a little heartbreaking uh, and it's heartbreaking to the reader too, but it's absolutely worth the read. And this is told from Nana's perspective, which I thought was unique. So if you're a cat lover, you might like this one a lot. The next book I'll mention is very well known. I believe it's, gosh, I think it came out in the 90s and they made a very well known movie with some very well known people in it. And that is Marley and Me, Life in Love with the World's Worst Dog by John Grogan. This is a memoir. It's a very touching story. Basically this young couple adopts this puppy and the puppy just turns their life upside down. Can't be tamed, is kicked out of obedience school, just wreaks havoc on this young couple's lives. But at the same time, it talks about loyalty and love and family, and it's very heartwarming and is the absolute epitome of what it is to have a dog as a family member. Here's another book that was made into a very well-known movie with some very well-known people, and that is The Horse Whisperer by Nicholas Evans. I'm not a huge Nicholas Evans fan, but I have read a few of his books. This one was beautifully written and I absolutely love this book. The title refers to the character Tom Booker and he runs a ranch in, I believe, Wyoming. And he is just that, he's a horse whisperer. He helps to tame and break wild horses. Then it follows Annie and her daughter, her teenage daughter, Grace, and Grace's beloved horse, Pilgrim. And Grace and Pilgrim were in a horrific, horrific accident. And it's changed Pilgrim so much so that it is recommended that they put Pilgrim down. But Annie believes that if they do that, something inside Grace will, will die. The accident has <clears throat> deeply damaged Grace as well, both, both physically and emotionally. And Annie feels that if they do put Pilgrim down, then that will be the point of no return for Grace. So Annie brings Grace and Pilgrim to this ranch and brings them to Tom Booker to try to help Pilgrim. And in doing so, help heal Grace as well. Trigger warning for this book, the very beginning is when the accident happens and it is graphic in detail, very difficult. So much for me that it took me a long time to watch the movie because I thought that if they did a decent job with the movie, I just, that wasn't something that I wanted to see. So just so you know, the, the accident that happens at the beginning is hard to read, but get past that, the rest of the book is beautiful. Next book I'd like to recommend is also well known, also made into a movie, although it's been quite a few years. I saw this as a young girl, and that is The Black Stallion by Walter Farley. This is a well known story, and this is mostly a, a story about the relationship between a boy and, and a horse. The boy meets the horse in while he's traveling with his grandfather. They're, they're initially in an Arabian port. The horse and his handlers ends up boarding the same ship that the young boy Alex is also traveling on. The ship sinks, the boy and the horse are the only survivors. They end up on a deserted island together. They develop a relationship because the, the boy saves the horse's life, the horse saves the boy's life on multiple occasions. And this friendship develops and this relationship develops. And then they're both saved from the island. They end up in the States and it kind of goes from there. And it's a beautiful story about identity and friendship and what it means to be a friend. If you haven't seen it yet, even though the movie is a few decades old, it's beautifully shot, especially the scenes on the island. Absolutely beautiful. Highly recommend both the book and the movie. Another book that has been made into a movie, and that is The Art of Racing in the Rain by Garth Stein. This is a heart-wrenching but deeply funny story. An uplifting story about family, love, loyalty, and hope, and really looks into the absolute absurdities of being a human, all told from the point of view of a dog. The next book I wanna talk about is one that I have not seen anybody else really talk about. I think it's relatively unknown. That is Unsaid by Neil Abramson. 
This follows Helena, who is a veterinarian. A big part of her job is deciding when to end the lives of terminally ill animals and pets that are in her care. Then, and this isn't a spoiler, but then Helena dies. She is faced with the decisions that she has made and because she is left with feelings of guilt and regret, she lingers in kind of a haunting mode. Her attorney husband, David, is left behind to take care of their many beloved but broken pets. One of which is Cindy, who is a chimpanzee who has been trained to uh, use sign language as communication. When authorities come to take Cindy with the intent of using her in a research project that will ultimately end Cindy's life, David decides to fight for Cindy and it goes from there and it is such a beautiful story. If you doubt the connection between human and animal at all, I highly recommend this read. If you've ever lost a non-human companion, I highly recommend this read. It won't make you feel more sad. I promise you it will give you some comfort. The next book I want to recommend is Leaving Time by Jodi Picoult. This book follows Jenna, who when she was three years old, her mother Alice went missing under mysterious circumstances. Her mother and her father used to run an elephant sanctuary in New Hampshire. One night an employee's body is found and it's clear that it's been trampled by an elephant. Jenna's mom Alice is taken to the hospital with, with a head injury, possibly caused by the same elephant. But she checks herself out of the hospital and she disappears into the night and is never seen again. Jenna remains convinced that her mother is not dead, so she enlists the help of a washed up detective named Virgil and a psychic named Serenity, who's lost her connection with the beyond. And the story goes from there, this trio of misfits of sorts go looking for Jenna's missing mother. And it is absolutely, <sighs> It goes places that you don't expect and I absolutely love that about a book. Also, there is a novella called Larger Than Life that tells the story. It's kind of a prequel to this book. You could read these books separately or together, but Larger Than Life actually tells the story of how Alice got involved with the preservation of elephants and the time she spent in Africa. And it tells her story of how she took in an orphaned baby elephant. And that story had me bawling my eyes out. So be warned about that. And it kind of mirrors the true story of Dame Daphne Sheldrick who founded the Sheldrick Wildlife Trust. Uh, they are in Africa and they take in orphaned elephants and nurture them and send them back into the wild. I highly recommend uh, if you're at all interested in the preservation of elephants or in elephants at all, I'll go ahead and link their website down below. Um, but I am a huge advocate of elephants, so these two stories were wonderful for me and I highly recommend. Another elephant story is Madoc, the true story of the greatest elephant that ever lived by Ralph Helfer. Big warning, I probably put this book down a minimum of three times because I was sobbing my eyes out. But that's not to say it's not a beautiful story. It absolutely is worth the read. And this is a memoir and it's about how a young boy is raised in a small town uh, with a baby elephant and they kind of grow up together. And then they are separated through circumstances out of control of the young boy. And it kind of tells the horrific story that elephants can go through if they are made to work, um, made to be in circuses and the abuse that they endure. And it is the journey that they each take to find each other again. And it's absolutely heartwarming and heart-wrenching and beautiful and I highly recommend it. And the last book I'd like to recommend if you love animals is The Story of Edgar Sawtell by David Robuluski. Uh, by David Robluski. This of course follows Edgar, who is a young boy who is a mute and he communicates with sign language and his he lives on a farm with his parents and his parents are in the business of raising a, it's a fictional breed of dogs and they raise them until they're a year old 
and they train these dogs for a full year before they sell them. And this particular training that they give these dogs is epitomized in Edgar's own personal dog, Almondine, who is his lifelong friend and companion. Everything is peaceful on the farm until Claude returns to the farm, who is his paternal uncle. I believe it's his dad's brother. Edgar gets a bad feeling about Claude. And then Edgar's dad dies suddenly. Claude kind of takes over the family much to Edgar's chagrin. Edgar tries to prove to his mother that Claude has something to do with his dad's death. He fails miserably and to the point where he feels like he needs to run away. He can't stay under Claude's rule. So he takes three of the yearling dogs that they're training and he sets out and it's a coming of age story. Edgar growing up, learning how to survive in the wilderness with these three young dogs and he meets people along the way, and it's just a wonderful coming of age story. It's a heartbreaking story, but then he ultimately knows that he must return home. He needs to face what happened to his dad. He needs to face his Uncle Claude, and he needs to return to the devotion of the dogs that his life is so centered around. This is not a highly rated book on Goodreads, but I gave it five stars. I absolutely love this book, and I and I hope you do too. So that's it. Those are the books I recommend if you are an animal lover. If you have any recommendations for me, I would love for you to comment below. If you've watched this far, I'd really appreciate a like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.